In this problem, we're given a piecewise defined function. There are two pieces, and the domain switchover is at x equals 3. For the piece that is uh, less, or x is less than 3, we have the, uh, the polynomial x squared minus 3. That's a parabola opening upward, shifted down 3 units. And for the piece that is um, for when x is greater than or equal to 3, we have the line x plus 2. So there's our piecewise defined function. And we need to look at the continuity and differentiability um, at uh, the given value of x. And I forgot to write it here, but that given value of x is that switch over place in the domain x equals 3. Um, if it's not continuous or not differentiable, we need to look at any left or right continuity or differentiability. So what we're going to do first is tackle continuity. So for continuity, we're looking um, at the limit from the left, the right, and the function value at x equals 3. So we've got the limit uh, as x approaches 3 from the left of the function would be equal to uh, the limit as uh, x approaches 3 from the left, and that would be of the polynomial uh, x squared minus 3 because that's where uh, x values slightly less than 3 live. And so um, we're looking at that particular limit, and for that limit we plug in uh, 3, um, and we would get 3 squared minus 3. Uh, that would be 9 minus 3, which would be 6. Okay, Even though it's the left limit, um, x squared minus 3 itself as a function is a continuous everywhere, and so the left um, limit would match just the full limit. So that's why we could just pull it, plug in the complete uh, 3 and not have a little minus sign there. Um, the limit from the right is going to use the other piece. So when we're looking at the limit from the right of the function, we've got um, the line x plus 2 that we are looking at because the x values slightly bigger than 3 um, are in that, uh, that realm. Um, and so we would compute this the same way. x plus 2, that's a line, uh, is continuous everywhere, so the right-hand limit there is just going to be the full limit. So we can calculate that right-hand limit by just plugging in our 3 value. So we'd have 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. The last thing we have to assess is what f of 3 is. Well, uh, the, the part on the domain there that has the equal is the x greater than or equal to 3. And so we're looking at the piece of the line. And so f of 3 would be our um, what we get when we plug in 3 to the line. So it would be 3 plus 2, which is 5. So taking a look at all three of these um, values, we see that they're not all the same. So since they're not all the same, we have not continuous. Okay, And in particular, you see that the, the left-hand limit is what doesn't match anything else. The right-hand limit matches the function value, and so from that we can read that it's right continuous. Okay, so right away we have already assessed what we have for continuity. So the next thing we would think about is differentiability. But see, we have already established that anytime we have a function that's not continuous at a point, it's not differentiable at that point either. And so since we don't have continuous at x equals 3, it's also not differentiable. Um, at that x equals 3 value. So what remains to um, assess is the one-sided differentiability. And that's going to take a bit of work. And that's going to utilize our uh, difference quotient for each one. So uh, the one-sided uh, differentiability, we've got to look at what um, f sub minus sign there prime of 3 would be. Okay? Um, that would be the left uh, differentiable. If that limit exists, this limit here that would be the limit from the left of um, this difference quotient. So we have limit as h approaches 0 from the left of the difference quotient. The difference quotient here is f of 3 because the 3 is the particular x value we care about, plus h. So f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over h. 
and we're looking for the limit as h approaches zero from the left of that. If that left-hand limit there exists, um, it would be uh, exist in this finite. It would be uh, differentiable from the left, uh, and the same sort of thing would happen from the right too. So we've just got to figure out what these are. So the limit um, as h goes to zero from the minus sign. This is where we've got to be super careful because we're dealing with a piecewise defined function. So when we're talking about um, h approaching zero from the left, we're talking about values slightly smaller than zero, so negative values. So when we're looking at the function um, evaluation of f of three plus h, we're really talking about f of three plus a small negative number. And so it would be really uh, three minus a little bit. And so we've got to utilize the piece where um, x is less than uh, three because we're talking about plugging in values that are slightly less than three here. So um, what we have to do then is uh, utilize this uh, x squared minus three um, function and notice how I dropped out the x and I put in an open set of parentheses because what I have to insert into the parentheses is that 3 plus h that's in the parentheses. Okay, so um, from that I need to subtract f of 3. Well, f of 3, 3 is in that bottom piece um, as far as the domain goes because we have x greater than or equal to 3. So what we're going to subtract from it is what we get from this line. So it would be our, um, our 3 plus 2 there, so our, our 5. Okay, And that's all over h. So let's keep going with this limit here. Limit as h goes to 0 from the minus side. We need to uh, clean up the top. Uh, which is going to involve uh, squaring that uh, first term out. So we've got uh, 3 plus h quantity squared. So 3 times 3 would be 9. And then we've got 3 times h twice. So that would be 3 times h plus 3 times h. That would be a total of 6 times h. And then we've got plus h squared. We've got a minus 3, and then we've got a minus 5 all over h. So when we combine or when we clean up that top um, by gathering our like terms for our, uh, our constants there, what we end up with, and because I like to see terms in decreasing order just out of you know habit, I suppose, we've got an h squared, we've got plus 6h, but then take a look at what our constants are. We've got a 9 minus 3 minus 5. So that would be um, 9 minus 8, which would overall be a 1 all over h. So now here's where we see there's an issue. Um, there is not a common factor of h in all of the terms in the top that we could factor out and cancel. And so that's our red flag that this is going to be problematic as far as actually finding what this limit is. If we were to um, try to compute this limit, what we're really doing is we're noticing that the bottom is going to be a 0 minus. Um, and, but then when we're talking about the top, the top isn't also going to be zero because we didn't have that common factor of H on the top. And so really we're looking at a zero squared plus six times zero plus one. So really we're looking at a um, one over zero minus situation. So it's the reciprocal of zero uh, minus that we know to be um, minus infinity there. Okay. So since this um, is not finite, what we have is that it's not left differentiable. Okay, so now let's tackle the right differentiability. Right differentiability is denoted f prime with a little subscript with a plus of three because we are, care about what's happening at three. So again, I'm going to use the limit as h approaches zero, but this time with a plus sign. And we are going to do f of three plus h minus f of three all over h. So the setup is identical except for the fact that we're looking at zero plus instead of zero minus. But that's the crucial um, observation here. Um, the zero plus is going to push us into um, a different piece for this um, f of three plus h. 
because with the zero plus uh, for h, we're talking about adding a little bit to three. So if we're gonna add a little bit to three, we're down into the line situation. And so we've got this um, empty set of parentheses plus two is our template for the line. That's where x values slightly bigger than three live. And so what goes in parentheses there is your three plus h because that was in parentheses for the function. And then again, we're going to subtract f of 3, but see, f of 3 was also coming from that line. So you got the 3 minus the 2, or sorry, 3 plus 2. Um, and all of that's over h. So now what happens um, when we clean this uh, top up? We've got, uh, let's see, a 3 plus an h plus a 2. So overall that's uh, h plus 5, but then from it we're going to subtract a 3 plus 2, so we're subtracting 5. And so overall on the top we only end up with um, h. I drew a far too big line for only having an h on the top there. Um, on the bottom we also have an h, and so not only do we have that common factor on the top and the bottom, that's all there is to it, so we're looking at the limit as h approaches 0 plus of the constant 1, and that um, value for the limit is just 1. The limit of a constant is that constant. Okay, So the fact that this is finite is telling me that it is right differentiable. All right, and what really um, made this work is the fact that uh, for the for the right hand derivative, each time we utilized uh, the function, we utilized the same piece. Each time it was the line that we dealt with here in this step right here, it was the line in both parts that made this work. The problem for the left-hand differentiability was that in this step right here, um, the two functions needed the two different parts because coming in from the left, we were going to have to deal with uh, the parabola part of it, um, which wasn't consistent with the line part um, in the jump discontinuity that we had. And so that's really the step that is telling you whether this is going to work or not. I also want to show you what this looks like um, as far as a picture goes, just to fully um, explain what we're seeing here. So the question here is, does this make sense? So this uh, piecewise defined function here, like I said, was a parabola um, shifted, opening upward, shifted down three, that was defined um, everywhere to the left of um, to the left of three. And so that um, value, we found that if we were coming in from the left, uh, we insert that 3 into the parabola. We've got 3 squared minus 3 is um, it's our 6. So if this is our x value of 3, we've got the value um, 6 where uh, we've got that open circle part. And our parabola here looks like this. Okay, It actually goes all the way down here to negative 3. But then we found that this line, um, as we're approaching um, 3 from the right, um, we plug in the 3, we get 3 plus 2 is 5, and so 5 is the, the solid part because we're in the um, situation where we have x greater than or equal to. And then it takes off in the, um, with a slope of 1, uh, up 1 to the right 1, and that would be the line part. So now here's the thing. When we are um, coming in here from the, uh, from the left-hand side, this point here is the function value. That is f of 3 regardless. So that is one of those points in our difference quotient that we're dealing with. But then what happens is coming in from the left, we have um, other points that actually happen to not fall on the line piece, but... Um, would end up falling on the parabola piece. So let's say this one is pretty close to the open circle. You see it's kind of a very negative um, slope line, but the the farther you get, or the closer you get to that open circle, since that open circle is immediately above or directly above that, um, that solid dot, what you end up approaching is this um, 
this vertical line there. And so that's um, what we're really seeing when we are getting that answer of the limit being equal to negative infinity. We have these negative sloped lines that are approaching a vertical line. And so that's what's happening here when we were coming in from the left. But then what happens when we come in from the right, we've got, here's that same parabola and that same line being pieced together for our piecewise defined function. And what happens here is still this point on the line that's on our switch over, it's still f of 3. That's one of our points that we're dealing with. But the cool part about it is um, when we're talking about from the right here, the other point that we're dealing with is just some other point on the line. And so no matter what other point on the line that you have, when you draw the... Uh, it's not really a tangent line, it's actually just the line itself um, that includes those two points, it's exactly the slope of that line. And that slope of that line is 1, which is what we got when we came in and found the right-hand derivative of this piecewise function here. So the key thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with piecewise defined functions is coming in from the left versus coming in from the right, you have to pay attention to what that implies about which piece you need to deal with for each particular um, sided limit. Um, so that's the one thing you have to be super careful with when you're talking about piecewise defined functions and one-sided differentiability.